Bullison, the legend. Bullison was whipped sometime in the 1960s by the old Eli dog. That's right, he's got the price tag, it comes from he was just one of many well thought of dogs in the litter from the breed of Eli the Spook. At that time, Flo Boudreau gave a nice red puppy to Jerry Clemens. He took the pup, kept it for six weeks, and then sold the pup. And we give it back to you, the people. He went somewhere else and got himself another pup that was near Blacksmith Shop. The pup was named Spook. She was out of a litter that had killed each other when they were very young. He kept her two months at most, and then she came in the first heat. He took her and bred her to Eli. They had four pups, three blacks and one brindle, two males and two females. One of the black males was Bullison, the other one was Eli Jr., the brindle female was Brindy. She bit the hardest out of all of them, and she was the biggest. Big bitch. She could break down a dog in less than three minutes. Brindy was awesome. Brindy was an awesome and badass bulldog, as bad as man has ever seen. She beat a dog one time like she was eating breakfast. No one has never seen anything like her again. The other female in the litter out of Eli's spook was a black named Lady. She was any man's kind of dog and would be considered to be the best from that litter. Both Bullison and his brother Eli Jr. were exceptional bulldogs. They were the cream of the crop, top-notch bulldogs and went into some tough competition to make history. When his litter was being raised on Jerry's yard, he took a special interest in Bullison. I like you enormously. Jerry walked him three miles a day and ran him 15 minutes each day on the mill. Not simply walking to Mordor. Also, while he was schooling him, he taught the dog to go to where he pointed at in combat, and he also trained him how to work the ball. One day, Bullison was rode with Boudreaux's Napoleon and Boudreaux's Paco, a son of Blind Billy. He smoked both of them quickly, and then he was bred to one of Floyd's bitches. All of this was in one hour in the noon under the July sun. The bitch later had 13 puppies. A while later, Bullison Little Mate was doing well in his sport, but folks in the game hadn't heard much of Bullison. Did you hear that? Now one weekend, everyone traveled to a North Texas town for a big show. Drive faster. There were lots of dog folks present. Within the crowd were the likes of Earl Tudor, Don Mayfield, Wayman Davis, Jerry Bean, and many more. It was Burke Klaus versus Bobby Hall with Maurice Carver as the referee. When Bobby Hall matched the dog from Maurice Carver, who riffed when he went into Bird Klaus and Becker. I have to weigh you. On the scale, Bird Dog weighed in at 46 and three quarters, and Bullison weighed in at 49 and a half. Hey, we weigh the odds, we make a choice. When Bobby came over the pit wall with Bullison, you knew something different was going on. That dog acted like a crazy dog or a maniac of the devil in disguise. When they turned them loose, all hell came with it. Everybody there was in detention. This black son of a gun just simply ate Bird's red alive. At the final scratch, Bobby couldn't hardly contain the dog in the corner, and he was scared that the crazy son of a gun was going to bite him. Klaus's red dog was out of it in five minutes, as Bobby sent bullets into the scrotum with Klaus's charge, and that was the cue for the fat lady to start singing. The fat lady has left the building! At ten minutes, the final scratch. When turned loose, bullets zipped across, and the match was over. Bobby could hardly contain the dog in the corner, and he was scared that the crazy son of a gun was going to bite him for real. This was the worst kind of man eater when conditions are normal, and they sure weren't normal then. Number one for Bobby Hall and Bullison. Sometime later, for an unknown reason, Bobby sold Bullison to Red Wallison, and Mr. Wallison decided that Maurice Carver was the man with his dog. Well, Dick, here's the deal. I'm the best there is, plain and simple. I mean, I wake up in the morning, I piss excellence, and nobody can hang with my stuff. Uh, you know, I'm just a, just a big, hairy American winning machine. If you ain't first, you're last. You know what I'm talking about? Again, this dog was known on several occasions when someone was moving in the car and he was loose to sort of go off his rocket. Despite these problems, they often hauled him loose. Why would you do that? Maybe because he was so hard to put in the sky crate. Who knows? On a move from Halls in Houston to Carver's place in San Antonio, Mr. Raymond Ho was elected to carry the dog. As usual, Bullison was carried loose in the car. Raymond said the only way he can keep Bullison from jumping on him during the trip was by playing with his testicles. I was even scared a little. That's a hell of a deal. Anyway, Maurice got the dog, and he was scared of the dog the whole time he had him. But known bulldogs would stop by Maurice's yard, and they parked their big rigs right up to his house. You could see Bullison jumping up two or three times right into the sky by the cable, opening his mouth and biting in there, making terrible sounds. Maurice once said, how I am when I have a dog and keep, I like to move my wife into another room and bring the dog with me to the house, watching TV with him and such, just becoming best of friends. 
Maurice had the feeling that if he was going to pit with the dog, he wanted to be friends with him. He often said, if I'm going to get down on my knees and ask the dog to take a killing for me, I want him to be a friend of mine. I'm going to need your help, Mick. Will you help me? But he had no doubt that Bullison had any permanent friends. We are not friends. Eventually, Bullison was matched to Ed Weaver's sir. Several folks from Oklahoma came down for this one. Again, it was the same old story. Bullison just wrecked Ed Sir dog. Sir was helpless in five minutes as Bullison defeated him with the same barnstorming type of style used against the Red Dog. Maurice said shortly after the match that he thought Ed would have brought something more better. That's number two for Bullison. Don Mayfield made a comment right after this match. Don said he thought Ed Weaver should be committed for even going into Bullison, as most people had already spooked him. This was certainly the case after the second match. I wake up scared. Later on, Bullison was matched again. This time, it was into Rick Halliburton. The dog Rick was said to be using was reported to be a son of Bullison, which turned out to be true. Fort Worth, 1972. So the stage was set and the match was set up by Don Mayfield, the unbeatable Bullison, for his next win against his own son, Benny Bob. Hey, your dog's unbeatable, right? Carver conditioned and handled the Bullison. Halliburton and Mayfield conditioned and handled Benny Bob. The convention took place in Fort Worth and it was a big show. There's a lot of people out there. The day was sunny, extremely hot, the temperature was approaching 100 degrees. Pitt was a 20 by 20 with walls three feet high. Some people even traveled some 200 miles for this show from all over the US, Canada, Mexico to see this event. They had bleachers up around the pit and the canvas over the whole thing. On the morning of the match, Maurice overslept and it was Don Mayfield who woke him up. Wake up, Glimmer Twins. Led him to some 50 miles to the place. Maurice, Pat, Bullison, Doris, Bobby Lee and another were the last ones to leave following Mayfield. Maurice, along with others, had the belief that Bullison could whip Russia and China too. Everyone thought this was the dog of all pit dogs. It was the last time anyone gave two to one odds and lost. Not a good bet if you win and a hell of one if you lose. No one, and I mean no one even went to check on Halliburton to see what he had. But everyone thought, hell Rick, you're crazy. This is Bullison and you don't have a chance. He's not crazy, but he's dangerous. Halliburton did the conditioning handling for Benny Bob and help from Don Mayfield. Benny was out of a bullet and bred bitch to Boudreaux's bows, bred to Clemens Brindy. The mother of Benny Bob was known as Clemens Jesse, and her name was later changed to Wickerson's Tina. The breeding of Bullison and Jesse was done while Bullison was still on the yard of Jerry Clemens. At match time, Maurice made a deal that he would enter the pit last. He didn't want to stay in the corner with Bullison for an extended amount of time. Father had insisted that he bring Bullison to the box after Benny Bob. Due to Bullison being the barnstormer by nature, he would try and bite his handler to be released to tear into his adversary. Many folks sat across the pit from Bullison and waited with great anticipation for the match of the century to begin. Both right on weight, 52 pounds. When he entered, Rick was ready, so was the referee, Joel Boudreau. The dogs were faced, and no sooner had they faced their dogs to one another in the hot Texas sun, it was game on. Maurice didn't even set Bullison completely down. He dropped him two or three inches and turned him loose. The match was on. Both dogs swapping holes in tremendous pace. As Don Mayfield said in his report, it was obvious pretty quick that if Bullison was going to get there today, it was not going to be a blowout. After a while, Bullison turned, and then after about 20 minutes, the bleachers started collapsing, one after another, to where there was only one that remained standing. The bleachers collapsed and the canvas came over crashing down during the Bullison match. Bullison scratched good, and then Benny Bob scratched good. After this, Benny Bob started to get faster, but Bullison got slower. Both Bulldog back in started to look like they had been attacked with ice picks. Now the dogs were battling out in the hot sun. It must have been maybe 105 back then, and Bullison was not doing well. There were cries from the spectators for Maurice to pick the dog up. Please stop. At 40 minutes, Bullison back in gave way and collapsed on him. Carver offered Halliburton to scratch the win. Halliburton declined because it wasn't his hound turn to scratch. At 48, a handle was made and it was Bullison turn to scratch. Carver released Bullison and he didn't move. He was so weak he couldn't hold his back end up and his ass in his field making him look like he was sick. At the count of six, Carver asked Boudreaux, the referee, to try and get him to scratch since Floyd had a small part in raising him. Help me please. Floyd took him, straightened his head up, released him to no avail. The results were the same. He tilted his head a little to the right, stood there, Bullison stood the line. Benny Bowers pronounced the winner. After this, Floyd picked Willison up, handed him over the pit to Maurice, who turned and walked off with the dog. It was obvious from the start that Willison was simply outclassed and outdog. 